Okay, let's do a quick review of the eight steps of the um, CDR evaluation process that the SSA is gonna go through if you're going through a CDR. Okay, we'll do this quick. I have individual short videos on each one of these sections, so uh, I'll direct you thereafter. So number one, they're gonna ask, are you working SGA? Y'all know what SGA is, right? Um, if not, look under uh, one of the playlists that I have. There's a glossary section. Um, there's things on, on SGA. So if, if you're not working, obviously the answer is going to be no. If you are working and it's over SGA amount, the answer is going to be yes, and you're going to be terminated. End of story. You just lost at step one. If the answer is no, you get to go to step two. So you're still in the game. Does your impairments, both the ones that you won on before and any new ones that didn't exist then but do now, do they meet or equal a listing? As you might recall, you can win a case either by meeting a listing or by proving that your residual functional capacity is not enough to allow you to perform any job full-time that exists in substantial numbers in the national or regional economy, okay, in a nutshell. So if the first one, if you meet a listing um, between your old stuff and new stuff, boom, your, your disability continues and you're done. So that's, that's a good one, a good result. Um, I mean, meeting a listing is not so great, but for the purposes of your CDR, it's good. If you do not meet a listing, then you go down to step number three, and then things start getting a little tricky. The question is, have you had medical improvement? Um, if the answer is no, you don't necessarily win at that point. They have to go and see if you fall under an exception to medical improvement. These exceptions have to do with errors that might've been in the prior file. They can also have to do with medical technologies that may have um, changed the scenario of you know whether you're disabled. Um, and they don't often cause a cessation, but they have to look at them first and make sure they don't. So it's just a step they have to go through even if you're not medically improved. Um, it, those also include um, bad acts, fraud, things like that, or medical non-compliance if you're not complying with medical advice, um, where they think that if you did comply, you wouldn't be disabled anymore, but you're just stubbornly not complying. Okay, more details in those other videos, okay, on that step. So anyway, if you if a medical, ex uh, number five exception doesn't apply, um, then you're going to be continued at that point. You had no medical improvement and a section, a, a step five exception did not apply. You've won at this step. You get to continue, meaning with your disability. If uh, you did have medical improvement, then they have to go to step four. So if it's step three, they decide that you did have medical improvement instead of no, you did not. Then they go to step four and decide whether it's related to work. Um, in other words, would the medical improvement change the capacity in which you could do certain work-related tasks. If it is related to work, then you're gonna go to step six and I'll get to that in a minute. If it's not related to work, so you've improved medically, but it doesn't in any way affect your ability to work. It doesn't improve it. Um, so if that answer is no, it's not uh, related to the ability to work, they're gonna shove you over to that, sec that step five where they look at those weird exceptions about fraud and uh, if there was some aberrational mistake in the lower file, that kind of thing. And if none of those exceptions apply, you will be continued and you've won at that point. If um, the medical improvement was related to work and you go on to section six, then this becomes kind of like how they did it at the lower levels when you first won. Number six is, well, does, does he have severe impairments now? The old, are they still severe? If not, are there new ones? If the answer is yes, then you're going to go on to Step number seven, which I'll get to in a second. If the answer is no, you don't have any severe, like you improve so much that none of them are considered severe anymore, you're done and not in a good way. You are ceased. Um, if, it, if you do still have severe impairments, they have to continue the evaluation. And that's where they develop your RFC, residual functional capacity for the current moment in time. You had one back when you first won. That's your CPD comparison uh, point date RFC. Um, so you're going to have a new one. And with the new one, they're going to then also look at your past relevant work. Well, with your new capacity, um, whether it's better or worse, can he or she do any of his past relevant work? 
Now, as I emphasize, past relevant work is a term of art. Um, you're going to want to find out what that is. It's, it's it's There's recency tests. They don't apply every job you did in high school. So even if you could do a job from a long, long time ago, and you could do it now because it was that simple and easy, if it's that long ago, it's not going to count as past relevant work. And that's a good thing for you. Okay. If you can do past relevant work, you're ceased. You're no longer disabled. If you cannot do past relevant work, as noted under step seven, they go into step eight, and that's can you do other work? Because remember, we always have to prove that not only can we not do our prior work, we can't do any other work that exists in substantial numbers in the economy. Okay. Um, if we can do other work, again, we're done. We are ceased. If we cannot do other work, awesome. You just won. You just got all the way through the process and proved that you are still disabled. Um, it's not that crazy of a process. It just takes a long time and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes while you're doing it. As I tell everybody, your best defense for a CDR is always having been prepared for it to begin with. When you win your claim, you keep going for follow-up for all of those impairments that continue. You know, If you don't go, it's gonna be somewhat presumed that it's either not a continuing impairment or it's certainly not severe. So your best bet, even if you don't have any treatments that are gonna work, there's no cure, continue to be followed for them, continue to express your complaints to your doctor so they continue to show up in your records over the years, okay? That's the biggest piece of information I give my people. <laughs> and I give it to you. All righty, that's the summary of the eight steps of the sequential evaluation. Oh, I should also say, grids can apply here. If you don't know what the grids are, check out the video. Um, we know that grids are great for people over 50, generally speaking, and they will apply here. And just think about it, when you first were awarded, you were younger, you might have actually skipped over into an age group that would be even uh, more helpful to you to prevail on a CDR than your prior age group when you were younger. So grids do apply, all right? All righty, any questions, you know where to reach me.